you doing, Larry? Mike. Oh, no. I don't, I don't have a signal. Oh, does that mean we're in a you Blumhouse have, you have a, movie? Do you have a signal? I don't even have a phone on me. <laughs> we're in deep trouble, Larry. We're definitely in a Blumhouse movie now. Oh. Either you don't have your phone or you don't have a signal. No service, though. Or you have shadows. Oh, multiple dream sequences. What movie did we see, Larry? We saw, God, what is this name? That's the bad thing about this movie. This is the hardest it's a generic name movie. to remember. It's like, was it, we left yes. the house? Or no, you need to leave the house nope. or left? You should have left. You should have left. That is it. We should have left this alone. We should have left this room. We should no. have left this house and I, not watched any of this. <laughs> I ain't going to say that. You know, I... <sighs> It is better than some of the things I have seen recently. That's because some most of it. the stuff we've seen lately has been garbage. I mean, you just you can't complain. It's got Kevin Bacon. But yeah, let's let's talk about Kevin Bacon though, because we we got to start with something positive here. And I think he is the biggest positive aspect about the movie: the feels, the emotions. What he is in this movie, he's like an older male that's with a hot actress and he's got all these little problems like he's jealous of her and her people and her he checks her phones it's strange you can feel exactly what he's feeling it's distress yeah he does distress very, very well. well like in star echoes and i think that's why i like that movie yes is he he plays that distressed just ghostly looking figure all or, the time yeah bags under his eyes looks like he hasn't slept in days it's like turning up anxiety to the maximum level well but this one was kind of more of a psychological horror kind of like it, and then it, it's like it didn't know what they wanted it to be it was jump scare and then psychological the whole first part of this movie i thought was pretty bad like the first 20 minutes to set up you don't like any of these characters. Uh, and that's a cut! Iber Latte. Uh, yeah, come on in, man. Um, How you doing, man? You good? Uh, yeah, living the dream. Uh, maybe you could just ask somebody if Going she's... Going again right away! Rolling! But once they get to the house, I did kind of like some of the aspects of the house. The way it looks, the long hallways. Yeah. You know, and there's times, because it, it does look modern. Yes, it does. Clean. And Ultra clean. And I know some people, they want dark, scary. But like haunted a, house. It's, it's a little like, bit of a different take on that. I, yeah. thought, I, I like the way the house worked into the movie. Doors that lead to nowhere. Hey. Doors that lead to just more doorways. Yeah, this house takes on this spooky, like, surreal... Like in the, the movie with Cusack and all that, where the house becomes alive and starts doing these weird things like changing sizes and doors open in other rooms. We've seen all that before, but what got me was the scares. Or just kind of like someone would jump in front of the camera, or there'd be a noise behind them. Or there'd be a dream. Or there's a dream. <laughs> yes. How many the times? dream scares. Like you said, it starts with a dream scare. The whole movie, that's how... I mean, you can't really get into a movie when you don't know if you, the whole movie just isn't a dream. And I didn't like how they tried to, at the beginning, make a big deal over angles and measurements. Yeah. And that only comes into play the for maybe stuff. two seconds. Yeah. I mean, the, when they're measuring outside. Right. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't match up to the inside. Yeah. It didn't go anywhere. That's a I mean, problem that with needed a lot to, of That needed to be happen a little more. Yeah. I know when we were watching it, you brought up John Cusack. 1422. We, we, 1408. Oh, 14. We didn't even know what yeah. movie it was. So I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah like, I agree with you, though. I was agree it with 1444? you. 1444? <laughs> you know, I'm even thinking the recent one we saw, Hansel and Gretel, a little bit. Kind There's of. some of that in there. And it also brings in to me a lot of the, the others. Yes. I felt a lot of that where you feel like somebody's lost and within a again, house. And that's a very good point. The others with Nicole Kidman, it's kind of similar. Kevin Bacon ran the best part of this movie. Nicole Kidman and herself and her amazing acting ran the others. Yeah. Without, without The kids were nothing. In fact, we have to talk about the kid in this one. The kids and the others, to me, were a little annoying and yeah. they, they weren't great, but they were better than this. This kid, I, I don't want to bash I don't, the kid. I don't either. I'm not going to bash kid. Yes. I'm going to just say miscast. They could have done better with that kid. Yeah, Avery Essex 
is beautiful. She's smart. She seems to know how to act real well in certain situations, but she can't do horror yet. And I, I told you, and I was, trying, I was trying to get it out when we were watching it, and I couldn't quite get it, but I think you'll understand it now. She seems like an adult acting playing a kid like a kid i think like how like you know how you old. would talk to a little kid your yeah. your baby talking them yep. i feel like she was baby talking wait how did that work yeah that was my only problem with her character other than that you know like i said i think it made i didn't think scared. she had the range i didn't think she, i i didn't feel scared when she was trying to act scared hello Is anybody down here? I got lost. <gasps> I, Kevin Bacon pulls it off. She didn't. Yeah. Siegfried but, didn't. But if you're watching, little girl, don't worry about us. I keep saying Siegfried. That's two assholes. Sie we don't know shit anyway. Sa Seyfried? Is it Seyfried? We had an argument. Amanda Seyfried or something Seyfried. Like that. Sorry. Okay. Amanda Seyfried. I keep getting that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people there. I, I always want to call her Siegfried. I, that's exactly so. what I've been calling her accidentally. So. <laughs> but she's not really a... She doesn't play as big as a part that I thought she was going to be in the movie. She kind of... There, she's there for the first about third, yeah. and then she kind of disappears for almost the rest she's of the movie. kind of just a plot device she's there to set up him she is the MacGuffin she kind of is <laughs> she's the he's so paranoid and so distracted by her and her phone usage and all this stuff and she's younger and she's pretty and blah 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 I mean even you even called it when she got out of the pool in the very opening scene of the movie I go wow she's like half his age yeah. and sure enough that immediately came into play but I did like that they addressed it and you know it sounds weird I was actually kind of enjoying some of the drama aspect. Maybe there's some other kind of besides haunted house underneath this. Yeah. I kind of get it. You know, I see why they're mad at each other. Well, they 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 work well together. They had pretty good on-screen chemistry. You got her and him had this thing when we both commented during the movie. We're like, wow, you know what I like is how real these guys feel. Yeah. They're not faking it. When Kevin Bacon gets pissed at her, I kind of feel that way because sometimes I do that where I'm pissed for a while and it carries over. And that's the way he was acting. And stuff like that felt so realistic that it made the characters better. It's like they were trying to make a drama but then smash this horror idea on top of it, like Blumhouse does. Yeah. Mirrors, shadows, and, and lighting stuff. And, and I will admit, the video, tubs. <laughs> the video was a little crazy sometimes, but it worked. But the audio, the music, and the tone, and oh my the, gosh, the that shadowing, was creepy. The locale. They wasted this location. They're in this weird area of Wales, and, but they don't do anything with it. Yeah. They have like him shopping like once with a weird guy at a store and then that's it. <laughs> and then the guy comes back and his part coming back. It, it made just, no sense. It makes no sense. No sense. And you're like, why did they even do that? It was a waste of time. Yeah. Well, that yeah. leads me up to the way they handled the ending. And we're going to be very careful not to spoil anything here. But the ending of this movie wraps up in a very weird bow because they don't tell you what the hell's really going on. It's left up to this, you gotta come up with your own answers kind yeah. of thing. It, kind of, I, I think my answer, I know what it is, and I, so I feel like that that is the answer. What you're Maybe thinking. you'll feel that way too with whatever Is the house with. evil? Is he dead? All these different things that have come up in other movies. You don't really know because in other movies, like the others, like I was telling him earlier, if others ended, before they showed the scene of them being dead in the house and it just ended there i'd have been like what the hell it it, it drove me nuts but instead we got this great ending of the others where you find out they're the dead ones in this house and all that stuff you get a conclusion this it was just like oh i guess we're done you don't know really what his role in the house actually is he doesn't do anything but i, I did feel like my ending I, I can't say it because I would spoil it, but there's a certain person that shows up, and I think I know who this person is, you know, what this place is to Kevin there's, Bacon's character. It's open to interpretation, let's yeah. say that. I feel like we should sum it up. It sounds weird. It's hour 30 min 33 minutes long. But it's not a long movie. Cusack's I movie. didn't think it was that bad. John Sex movie. If you enjoy that and yeah. the others, I will give it I could, a recommendation. Yeah, I could literally rip on it 
all day long yes. because we haven't had really anything good recently. Maybe that's distorting my brain and my feelings. It is. It's coronavirus. You no, know, I'd probably give this one a C. I just, had the, had horror the movies just. No matter how bad they are, they're just not quite as bad as other bad oh, movies. Oh, no, I hate them. Sometimes <laughs> I You know, I can enjoy them. a good stupid jump scare. The Curse of scare. La Verona. Yeah, I, I can still enjoy a stupid <laughs> jump scare horror movie. I'm just one of those people with uh, a guilty pleasure. This will be My really positives good. are definitely the sound, the camera work, Kevin Bacon, and the idea of this darkness in this house and him. And they come, they bring them together. And that's kind of a cool concept. And you don't know what happened with the wife and all this other stuff. It just, it leaves you there. And that's the bad stuff. The little girl, out of her element with this. There was no character development. There was no setup of these characters. You didn't even know what the hell Kevin Bacon was doing. He was just there. Um, and I thought some of the jump scares were cheesy and the double, triple dream sequence crap that we've seen with Blumhouse so many times. Stop! For the love of God, stop Blumhouse. From If you do that one more time, I swear to God, you're going to get a letter. <laughs> I'm going to have to give this movie a D+. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, what saved it for me was Kevin Bacon. Yes. You know... A Kevin Bacon movie is still better than a lot if of If you'd have movies. taken him out and, and put, put in, in a like, generic uh, actor. Or even if you just put in Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> it would have turned into, like, The Happening. Oh, my God, no. Mark Wahlberg in a crazy, demented house would be hilarious. <laughs> I would. That would be a comedy. Which is something funny, because I'd bring up... We were going to talk some trivia and stuff tonight, which I don't think we're going to have time for. I was going to bring up the David Cap and... Pam Baton the worked link. on Stir yeah. of Echoes together. Right. And I, I put on there, like, you know, what other movies did they... And one of them was Boogie Nights, which Boogie, obviously, yeah. you know, they never <laughs> worked together in Boogie Nights. Kevin Bacon wasn't in, ever in Boogie Nights, mm -hmm. but I was like, if Kevin Bacon needs to be in a movie, that's the movie he should a have been in. A remake of that <laughs> with an older Boogie Nights character. Because I could just... Uh, it's just... I, I look at Kevin Bacon, I'm like, yeah, you're definitely yeah. a porn star. <laughs> I, I need him to do more. I need him to do more movies. This told me one thing. He needs to get back out there and start cranking out some good movies. Because mm. he is he could pull off like a Pacino thing or something to where he plays a bad guy or some kind of drug lord. And he oh. would be amazing. See, that's a good thing. You still oh. know Kevin Bacon. Still got yes. it. He can act. Call me. So I got... I got nothing left. Uh, everybody, July 10th is the key oh date. God. That is when we're going to see Unhinged with Russell Crowe. That's our first movie <laughs> back. We got that coming up. Tenants coming up. And a bunch of other really big blockbusters are going to blow up in the summer season. We can get back to normal. Guys, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight and dealing with us. Uh, I know we haven't been around a lot. And I know we aren't posting a lot. There's just nothing going on, I swear to God. And I just can't bring myself to deal with it. <laughs> I'm having trouble, okay? So. Even tonight, he's like, Larry, I think I found one. I'm so this happy. A real movie. And then I saw the triple <laughs> dream sequence in the beginning, and I'm like, oh, God, what have we done? Okay, so until next time, guys, see you later. See ya.